we find the cure and live in a world free of MND. By the time that you watch this, I will no longer be here. from Yorkshire who got to live out his dream of playing rugby league. When I was a little kid playing at under nines, under eights, it, the guys were always seemed to be a lot, lot bigger than me. How tall are you exactly? I let them people that, you know, said I weren't going to be, going to make it, you know, just inspire me more to, to be more determined, you know, to be a professional. Oh, we just get so nervous, you know, when you see all these big players coming on field and I used to think, oh my goodness me, you know, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad they were fast. Rob Burrow's dad. Oh well, <laughs> it, it's been marvellous ever since he was born. You remember Rob when he was a little lad sidestepping here? We remember it like it was yesterday. It brings back a lot of memories. Nervous all the time, but thoroughly loved it. We enjoyed it just as much when we yeah. went to Wembley as we did coming Isn't here. It? We brought him up with no expectations other than enjoy yourself, Rob, and uh, he certainly did that. And, you know, walking on air again, because I used to run on with the water, and uh, every time one of our players scored a try, he used to shake their hands and uh, probably went a little bit over the top. <laughs> Steve. We just really wanted him to mix with other people and get some teammates and make some new friends outside of school. That's better to add. When Rob and some of the other players started to get noticed by scouts, you start to get very nervous. We never thought for one minute that he would have ended up playing at Wembley in grand finals yeah. and unbelievable, really. <laughs> still, you still feel it, you know, the spirit's still here. You see, yeah. They always used to say, oh, he's good, is that Rob, but he's never going to make it because he's not big enough. <laughs> I'm a forward, also one of the biggest men in the team. I look down on him. I'm a standoff and I need him to take the ball forward. So I look up on him, but I look down on him. Well, I just like scoring tries, so I look up to no one. I dreamt of as a kid, you know, and uh, I wasn't going to give it up easy. The pocket rocket as he's no one around, Headingley. I was determined to do it. We met when Rob was 12 and I was 14, and we both agreed professional contracts at the Rhinos. I remember seeing this guy. It was so small and so quick. Had some superpowers as a player. They were their worst nightmare. <laughs> 
for whatever reason, we were sat next to each other in the dressing room and we spent the next 15 years alongside each other. Rob Burrow forms uh, a part of a group, a cohort, a set of comrades who were the most influential and important people in my life. Hi, I'm Rob Burrow and this is the Leeds Rhinos. So at half backs we've got Dan Maguire and Kevin Sinfield. They've got plenty of experience between them. They're often behind everything that goes well. They're the key orchestrators in everything we do well. So in one second row we've got Carl Ablett or 40 20 as, as the lads like to know him. Reason being he, he looks 40 but he's only really around 20 years old. In the other second row we've got Jamie Jones Buchanan. He's the one that stands out, he's the one with the big bushy beard. Here's Jones Buchanan, this could be it. Burrow sprints away. So I'm at Ucker. You'll often see me trying to run away from the big guys, trying not to get hurt, but on the back of everything the team does well. And that is the Leeds Rhino. He's exceptionally talented, but goes against the conventional paradigms, if you like, of what a rugby league player should look like. And everybody's got this perception that he should be big and bulky. Yet you look at this young fella who doesn't look like he's grown since he was in under 10s. It is a, a tough sport and a lot of people know it is a tall man, big man sport. I don't really know what they said anyway, so they, they can say what they want when I score. I was always surrounded by doubt. You know, people say, he's a brilliant player and you know, it's magic what he does, but it's too small to make it and he just proved them all wrong. What everybody thought was his weakness became his biggest strength. Rob's squad number was number seven. Rob always had that seven on his back. what a rugby league player should look like. Have you been surprised by your impact? You know, it's nice people talk about it, but I don't, I don't really uh, let you know, anything go to your head. We knew we, we were good and athletic, but the success he had and all the team had with Leeds, you don't think you can be any more proud. I met Rob when I was a teenager. I used to dance with Rob's sister and um, I'd met him at a dancing presentation. And it was actually, at the time, Leeds had been playing Castleford and, and I'd said, does anybody know the rugby scar? And Rob had kind of, you know, chirped up um, with the scar. And then we had some mutual friends and he got in touch and um, asked me out on a date. Well, the first time I did stand him up because my mum found out I was meeting him and you know a shy teenage girl um, so I, I didn't I did stand him up the first time but we went to the pictures the second time and and the, the rest is history
I've got a great question for you. Are you ready? I better know the answer. When the kids were born, he'd, he'd take them to play groups and, and they were all, you know, mostly mums there and, and Rob didn't care, you know, he'd, he'd still go with the kids. Anything that made the kids happy, Rob, Rob would do. Dad will sometimes put a film on, we mostly choose. And it's like a movie night, I always sit with him and cuddle up with him. When I'm reading my book, he always says, Mayette, that was beautiful reading. Life was, was perfect, you know, we had everything. We had nice holidays, um, you know, three beautiful children. You know, what, what more could we ask for? And, and I think sometimes, looking back now, you, you don't realise those little things and how important, you know, those things are. Makers already leads a record-breaking seven times at grand final winners and they want a little more here tonight. To get my last game in a grand final at the, you know, the best arena ever, you know, it's, uh, it's something I'm really going to enjoy. Entered the fray for the last time in his career. Burrow with a kick, and between a couple of legs is another look on. Danny McGuire claims another. We didn't expect to win that day. To win it tonight, but what they were 12 months ago is a remarkable chapter in their story. Rob, what a way to bow out, huh? Uh, you know, I've been very lucky to be involved in a, you know, a special group of players throughout my career, and uh, you know, this is the, uh, the fairy tale ending. Retiring duo, Rob Burrow and Danny Maguire. When him and Danny Maguire lifted the trophy, you know, I thought, well, the the, the memories there, they're complete. Leeds Riders, Super League champions. It's an amazing night. Rob got diagnosed in December 2019. Yeah, Only a couple of days after that, Rob announced to the world that he'd got motor neuron disease. So when did you first know something was wrong, something just wasn't right? Um, probably a few months back. Um, family telling me I'm slurring my speech a bit, um, which I've always been a little bit short-tongued, so and they were really took notice or believed them. Didn't know much about MND at the time. Um, very quickly Googled like everybody else would and uh, you see those uh, terrible stats which are 33% uh, down the first 12 months, 50% down the first two years and um, you find yourself thinking, Rob's staring down the barrel here of a big shotgun. You may not be able to speak, you may not be able to swallow, you may not be able to breathe independently, and of course you can have weakness in your arms and legs, and all of this leads to, to dependency and, uh, and a reduced lifespan. It is a life-limiting condition. I'll never forget 
being in that room and being told it's not good news. Um, I'm sorry to tell you that. Sorry. And then you ask the question of how long and you're told, you know, a year to two years. And, you know, at that point, I was just thinking, the kids, what, what are we going to tell them? <laughs> and, you know, one of the first things that Rob said to me was, thank God it's me and, and not the kids. And, you know, that's all he was bothered about. It... <laughs> Sorry. horrible thing to happen. Um, I'm getting upset. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's the emotional side. Um, you know, I suppose you have your good days, your bad days, but... Um, yeah. Come on. Cheers. Yeah. A couple of deep breaths. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's um. Cheers. Ah. Sorry. Within another couple of days, we found ourselves up in Carlisle meeting Doddy Weir, and the way Doddy was attacking MND, his positivity, his character. Live life, keep smiling, and wake up every day fighting MND. The effect that that meeting had on Rob, we didn't say it, but we both knew that we were going to get after this. Maybe it's the athlete in the all. Bit like my career, you know. Dalton bit off quite a few times. Don't want to lie down and just take it. I'm a fighter. I'm lost, I might not be able to tackle m and I'll certainly be swinging. I'm not going to give in. Out till my last breath. There is the hooter, um, fittingly involved in the action at the end. Hands on his hips, embraced by all, saluted by all. Rob Burrow. Unfortunately, me and Deborah, I can't really speak. Pretty keen to become a voice. Hopefully, you know, I can tell the kids off and tell them I love them.
princesses. I'm a prisoner in my own body. That is the way MND gets you. The lights are on, but no one is home. I think like you, but my mind doesn't work right. I can't move my body. Right, I've now got seat belts on and we're all yeah. up. You know, suddenly, you, you know, life is never going to be the same again. I could not be any more proud of my kids. They are living their best lives and I couldn't ask for any more from them. I love my wife and kids more than anything. All right, just letting us go. Thank you. There we go. There we go. In we go, kids. It kills me seeing Lindsay juggling everything because I was such a hands-on dad. You hate to see your wife with the burden of doing it alone. <laughs> You're like a dingle-dangle scarecrow. I think I would have broken down if it was me, but Lindsay has this unwavering patience with everyone. I love going swimming because it is good for my movement and Lindsay can do some more exercises and with me because she is a physio. I find it easier to walk in the pool and the water makes it not as uncomfortable on my joints which are very stiff from the lack of use. never anybody ever anyone else that I was ever going to marry so you know it's a cliche isn't it love at first sight but um, I think that's true he always says find somebody else you know you're still young but there will never be anyone else no one can ever take Bob's place Can you be sat up, of course? To be quite honest with you, Jeff and I feel a lot better when he's with us. He's such a, you know, a funny person. <laughs> and we won't want him any different. We don't want him to change. He's, he's just a lovely lad. <laughs> he's got a smirk on his face, hasn't he? He's up to something, yeah. He's going to say something about me. I know what it is. She does have a gob on her. <laughs> wow, how rude. Oh dear. Don't worry, I'll get him back. At the end of the day, it's, it's still our boy. I think the relationship with my parents is stronger than ever. Before I had them and he, you just take the kids up for an hour a couple of times a week. Now I don't need them for everything and it is like I am their kid again, relying on them again. He's just doing what Rob's always done, smiling, getting on with things, um, telling us off now and again, uh, telling me I'm a wimp. So just, just like normal, really. <laughs> The first time I met Rob, I had said to him at the end of the consultation, it's an honor to look after you. I think we have a relationship of trust and mutual respect and uh, lots of laughter in clinic. So uh, it's, it's really lovely actually looking after him. I know that the last time we briefly spoke about, you know, advanced care planning, and at that point you felt that that was not something that you would want to visit then. And I understand that, and we don't need to talk about it also. When you were playing rugby, did you go for any game with, like, advanced planning of, like, this is where I'm going to be nutritionally, this is where I'm going to be mentally, emotionally? Every game. Every game. <laughs> so I'm not too different from you, then, am I? <laughs> planning everything. 
wanting to know what you would want for yourself. I would not plan for six games a week. <laughs> <laughs> Always cheeky today, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's the yeah. That, that. <laughs> oh, good lord! I <laughs> get that wrong. <laughs> my family would react the more was taken away from me. It seems as though they'd become a beacon of hope for families in the same situation as us. You might be able to say that. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three, big stand chant. One, two, three. Up we come. That's it. That's it. And again, we're a big step. Oh, that's it. Um, I, I don't. I don't particularly like running. Right at the start, it was all about Rob, because he was my friend. You know, initially it was about trying to raise some money for Rob and his family, and to show support like we all do when friends need it. Just tried to do a bit of running for a minute. Keep going. What can I say about Kev? Once in your life you come across a special human being. I have a guardian angel looking after me. You realise pretty quickly that this is everywhere. There's 5,000 people across the UK with what known disease and there's thousands of others who have had their lives ravaged by such a terrible disease. I'm gonna go and do something. know the effect he is having on people. He brings hope to people's lives. The guy who make the impossible possible. I think the friendship, the love, the fact that they'd walk through brick walls for each other without a second thought. And I, that is incredibly special. Feels a little bit like you're not doing them enough justice by using words like superhuman and legends. They're more than that. They're, they're just wonderful human beings. I think Rob would agree with me. Oldham is my town and Pontefract is his town. But Leeds is both our cities.
he needed something that had some legs, pardon the pun, but had some legs to go year after year after year in Rob's name and we found something. In my own mind, the Rob Burrow Marathon is a way for people to show how much they care. Well, my friend, it is finally here and I have done enough old training for it. I'm finally getting involved in an event for me. I will be honestly proud to finish it with my mate in the same time. The only way that could. Just enjoy what's before you today. There can be heartbreak, life can be cruel. You don't know what might be taken away. Awareness for motor neurone disease since Rob and his mate's champion cause. Well, it's gone well and truly through roof and that's worthy of endless applause. Well, it was a really special moment. Everything we've done has been built around friendship. And I think it was a great symbol of that. How many people will be jealous of a smacker on the cheek? <laughs> Three amazing sportsmen, Doddy Weir, Rob Burrow and Stephen Darby, who are all living with motor neurone disease. And that is, in case you don't know, an illness without a cure. For the first time, the three of them have spoken openly with each other and us about the impact their diagnosis has had. Being here today, talking about what we're going through and talking about MND, it's important that we raise that awareness and get that message out there. That's why it's a big thing for campaigning all three of us, really to put the, the fight together to try and make a difference. Big thing for me is normality. I don't want people feeling sorry for me. I just want to get on with life. <laughs> form this community that's hell-bent on not just raising money and awareness but you know changing people's lives the way he has opened his life up which has been such a private life previously has been incredible i have patients coming in now who say i've got rob burrow's disease i had somebody come in who's when after i gave the diagnosis he said I know what to expect. I have never in 10 years had patients who have known what to expect. And that is only possible because Rob has gone public about his condition. Who's got the most tries out of you two? Oh, I'm by a long way. <laughs> by a long way. She's laughing. Yeah, she's yes. laughing. Yeah. It is amazing what you two have done, honestly. The amount of money you've raised and the, the profile you've done for MND is just phenomenal. I brought your CVs up here today. Congratulations, and for all the inspirational work you've done, Bob, you've been amazing. He knows that this is an awful disease for everybody. I don't think there's many more virtuous traits than to give everything that you've got for the, for the sake of others. His determination and incredible efforts have truly put MND in the front line, giving so much hopefully to all of us living with MND and our families. You've been an inspiration to so many, and we have nothing but admiration for everything that you've done. You know, the reality is that, you know, six people in the UK will be diagnosed with MND today. One in three of those won't make it to a year of diagnosis and that's why it's so important that we raise this awareness and we try, you know, we, we try and find a cure for this horrendous disease. Yeah, this is much better for Parkinson.
to me, the center is about hope. That site is vacant, empty. To be told that you have motor neuron disease and to walk out of that room and then pretend that everything was normal, I think that's just cruel. This center will provide that space to grieve in, to plan in, a place where patients will feel welcome. When Dr. Ian asked me if I would back the project, I immediately wanted to be involved to have a purpose-built centre in my name, I was totally blown away. To bring the family to a new building with wheelchair access and to have a place where the kids want to come and feel at ease. It affects the whole family so they will feel appreciated and it is nice to know their loved one is in the best place possible. I think it's the, the fitting legacy for what a character like Rob Burrow brings to the world. So you asked me the question, you know, what does Rob Burrow mean to me. Even in some of the most adverse, horrendous times, you know, there's, there's always hope, there's always positivity, there's always things that we can do. You know, I want to build this Rob Burrow Centre and uh, he's supporting this, but that's not quite the legacy. The legacy is how to live life in the now, against all odds. Rob, God bless you, mate. I just hope he knows how proud we are of him. Please welcome onto the stage Lindsay Burrow, Kevin Sinfield, and this year's Helen Rollison Award winner, Rob Burrow. I'm totally overcome with this award due to the amount of amazing people that have won this before. In particular, my MND here at Dolly Weir. I will accept the award on his behalf. I am inspired to keep going by my friend Kevin Sinfield, the guy who made the impossible possible. My family as a whole who have put their life on hold to care for me, especially my beautiful wife Lindsay and my amazing kids. Lindsay did not expect to sign up for this, but she puts me first and foremost. I'm not here without her sacrifice. And lastly, this is for all the MND warriors out. We will not stop, we find the cure. Thanks for your help. I have had such a great life. I have been gifted with a wonderful wife and the most incredible three children. that they know how much I love them. He has left a mark on this world. So proud in everything he's done before sport and then watching him play sport. Lots of people were once ashamed of being diagnosed with MND, but now that's changed, and that's down to Rob. To achieve what is achieved, I'm so proud of him. They are going to find a cure. Then we can all say we were strong enough to fight for it, like Rob's always done. Seven. 
I know the legacy that Rob's left will stand the test of time and they have so much to be proud of Rob for. Daddy Rob. They're so lucky to have him as a dad. I'm just a lad from Yorkshire who got to live out his dream of playing rugby league. As the father of three young children, I would never want any family to have to go through what my family and children have since my diagnosis. I hope I have left a mark on the disease. I hope it shows to live in the moment. I hope you find inspiration from the whole story. My final message to you is whatever your personal battle, be brave and face it. Every single day is precious. Don't waste a moment. In a world full of adversity, we must still dare to dream 